Hi, this is welcome to the Mind Expanding Puzzle Series. This is a new series where I'm going to use simple puzzles and problems to show you very interesting things about logic and reason. And uh, because one thing about science is, is you need to be able to think. And so puzzles are a great way of training people how to think. And this is an interesting problem that was presented to me at, at a party I attended a, a couple of weeks back. And uh, I thank the person that presented it because I had completely the wrong idea. And then when I finally figured it out, I was like, oh, wow, that's really cool. This is an interesting problem. This is called the Monty Hall problem. And let me explain. Uh, so I'm going to demonstrate the Monty Hall problem. It seems like it contains a twist that seems like a paradox, but it's not when you understand the details of how it works. And I'll show a simpler explanation that you'll than you will find on Wikipedia to show that there is a course of action for this Monty Hall problem that gives you a 66% chance of winning. And what we're having here is a, you're, you're winning the car is, is winning in this particular case. So let me explain the Monty Hall game. This is, Monty Hall was, a, talk, was a, a game show host on a show called, I, let, I believe, Let's Make a Deal. And what you would get in the game is a contestant would have to choose from three doors. The contestant does not know what's behind the doors. But what the contestant is, is told that one door contains the, the grand prize, the car. The other two doors contain a goat, which is, you know, the, the booby prize, whatever you want to call it. And so the contestant must choose one of the doors. And from what I told you, the odds of winning the car is 33%. So for the sake of this explaining the, the problem here, let's assume that the, that the contestant chooses door number three. Okay, then what Monty does to, to add a twist to the game, Monty will take one of the remaining doors, because there's going to be a goat. Whichever one has a goat, he's going to reveal one that has a goat. He's going to remove a goat from the game. Okay, which means now that under one door is a goat, and the other door's got to be a car. Okay, then the contestant is given a choice, the second choice to make. He's told he can keep his original guess, or he can switch to the remaining door. Okay. Now most people, including me, since it's obvious that the car is under one and the goat is under another, the probability of winning with the second choice is 50-50. Now this is only true if you flip a fair coin. In other words, if you flip a coin and say, heads I'm going to get this one and tails you're going to get that one, you're absolutely right. Your odds of winning are 50-50. But there are two other courses of action that are based on your previous choice. By flipping a coin, you're eliminating the information you gain from your first choice. Okay, and I'll explain all that. It sounds cryptic, I know, but we'll, we'll explain it. So, let's repeat the courses of, let's go over the courses of action. Your first course of action is to randomly choose, flip a, flip a coin, and your odds of winning are 50-50. There's another course of action where you always keep your original choice, and that will give you an odd of the odds of winning are 33%. Now, when I say 33% here, I really mean 33.33333, and then when I say 66%, I really mean 66.666666. I'm just saying these for brevity. The other, third course of action is to always switch to the remaining door, which will give you an odds, and I'll explain how this comes about, of 66%. So, I'm going to show how it's all, uh, that always switching will give you an odds of 66. Now, if you want to Try to figure this out on your own. Please pause the video now. First, let me give you the quick answer. The quick answer is not the simplest answer to understand. Okay, the quick answer is, if your odds of winning the car on your first choice are 33%, and once Monty removes the remaining car and gives you the choice, that means if the probabilities had to have to add up to 1, and the probability of staying with your first choice is 33%, that means the odds of switching has to be 66%. So swapping should be 60 but this throws people for a loop, and, and I'll show you why I don't automatically take mathematical derivations as truth. But this is the quick answer, but it doesn't explain how you get the 66 It just says it has to be 66% because everything has to add up to 1. So let me explain to you very simply how this 66% odds come about. Again, in my world, okay, everything must agree. Mathematical models, logic and reason, and observation all have to agree before I accept some. Just because the odds add up to, has to be 
66% because things have to add up to one is not good enough for me. I want to know the reason and logic. And I'll show you because when you figure out the reason and logic, it gives you more ways to uh, do other things. It, it improves your understanding of things. Okay, now in this case here, we don't have to worry about observation because this is a contrived example. Okay, so we don't have to worry about observation. But you could do computer models and you would come up with the, the, the same answer. So let me show you between courses of action two and three how you get the 66%. So here is your original, and I'm showing you uh, with the doors face up so you can see what's going on. But right, remember, the contestant can't see on his first choice what he's choosing. So let's say that on his first choice, the contestant picks the car. Well, if he picks course of action two where he always keeps his choice, that means on the second choice, he's always going to get the car, or if he chooses the goat, he's always going to get the goat. So if coming into the second choice, you have a 33% chance of getting the car and a 66% chance of getting the goat, then your odds of winning, if you, if you keep the strategy of always keeping your original choice, your odds of winning the car are going to be 33%. All right, but let's look at the course of action three where you always swap. Well, if the contestant on the first choice picked the car, and then Monty is going to remove one of the goats, then always switching means that the car is going to be exchanged for a goat. 100% of the time. Okay, now let's look at the other way. If the contestant originally picked a goat, doesn't matter which one, Monty's going to remove the other goat. And therefore, all with the, the course of action of always swapping means the goat is going to be converted to a car. So if we come into your first choice with a 33% chance of getting the car and a 66% chance of getting the goat, then swapping will convert the goat into a car, and that means your odds of winning the car are 66%, and the odds of winning the goat are 33%. Put that 66% here. Okay, so your the course of action of always keeping or always swapping is a course of action based on your original choice. And I'll demonstrate what that, what that means. That's called a conditional probability. Okay, this would be the same as if instead of you know, Monty removing a goat, that which is just a, a fancy way of, of exchanging your, your or, or swapping your... If Monty came to you and said, okay, since you chose, I'm going to give you the option that A, of keeping your original choice, or... If you want a goat, I'll give you a car. If you want a car, I'll give you a goat. In other words, I'll give you the option of, of inverting what you, what you want. Now, if you know your odds of winning the, the goat is 66%, then obviously you're going to want to invert. Take the invert option that Monty is going to give you. This trick over here where Monty removes one of the goats is effectively giving you the, choice, the ability to invert what you selected if you always swap or always keeping what you selected. Okay, that's why this works. That's why the mathematics comes out to be 66% if you take course of action 3, which is always to swap your original choice. Now let me show you a variation to beat a, beat a dead goat. Suppose a game were like this, where there was two cars and a goat in the original choice. And then whatever you chose, Monty's going to take away a car. Okay, well that means that going into this, you're going to have a 66% chance of getting the car, and a 33% chance of getting a goat, and a 66% chance of getting a car, and a 33% going into your second choice. So now, if your new course of action, if this were the odds, is to always keep, because that means it gives you a 66% chance of getting the car. Okay, and you don't want to always swap, because your 66% chance of getting the car is going to be converted to a goat, 66%. Uh, 100% of the time. Okay. The problem is if the, if, the, if the person who did not know what the odds are of what they were going to win, then this strategy doesn't work because you don't know whether to always keep or always go. You need to know what the probability of win here is in order to be able to use a strategy to know which strategy to pick on this side. Okay. If they don't tell you what, you, what the odds are over here, your best strategy is your only strategy is really to flip a coin because you don't know. And let me give you a, another variation that shows this. Okay, suppose, going back to the original where it's two goats in a car, the Monty twists up the game. After he removes the goat, 
Okay, he's going to scramble up. So you don't remember what your which one was your original choice. If you don't remember which one was your original choice, you can't take advantage of these strategies here. Your odds are 50-50 because you're essentially choosing random. Because you know one's a car and one's a goat. So your odds are 50-50 because you don't have the knowledge of your previous choice to be able to take advantage of course of actions 2 and 3, which are choices based on your previous choice. You see how that works? So I can go on with variations that are interesting. So for the original game, as stated, always switching does result in a 66% chance win. And the key here is they were able to show conceptually why the mathematical result is what it is. And again, the math only shows what the answer has to be based on the laws of probability, but the conceptual model shows you why. And knowing how and why something works to me is a lot more valuable. Because then you can go into all those other variations and you could change things up and you could even use this probability thing for other engineering things like how to deal with noise on a communication line which is this dealing with noise on a communication line is a, a clear example where this kind of, of uh, conditional probability works very very well again here we're showing where the math and the reason agree with each other this is a very demonstrable thing thank you very much